Hey, I am a revision geek and I want you to come and join my revision geek world. Welcome to the Diaries of a Revision Geek. I cannot wait for you to watch these interviews. They are so super fun. I've got qualified accountants together talking about their revision journeys, the highs, the lows, the struggles, and all the things in between about how other people got their plaque up on the wall and how they got qualified. I've picked qualified accountants in my LinkedIn network on purpose to help and support you guys, to inspire and motivate you if you are on your accounting journey. Feel free to like and subscribe below for more. Just click on the icons and I will keep you up to date with the diaries of a revision geek. Let's get started. <laughs> In today's interview, we have Rachel. She is AAT qualified and she has an MBA. You might also recognize Rachel from her YouTube channel. In Rachel's journey today, we talk about how she leveraged her AAT qualification into so, so many exciting things. We're also having an honest and open conversation about confidence and anxiety and mindset during your revision journey. Rachel talks about her study, work and life balance and what that truth meant for her. Enjoy the Revision Geek interview. Let me know what you think. I'm super excited to introduce our Revision Geek today. We have Rachel having an interview with us. So hi, Rachel. Great to have you. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. It's very exciting. Me and Rachel were just saying how we like know each other <laughs> on, from the internet, um, but we, this is the first time we've spoken, so it's so good. It's so fun. Um, and we are going to dive into Rachel's Revision Geek journey today. So yeah, feel free to introduce yourself. Let us know who you are. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am so excited to have you here with us in your ears, wherever you are. If you are walking a dog, driving to work, uh, Helen and I are both so grateful that you're here listening to us today. Um, so if you don't know me, hi, welcome. Uh, my name is Rachel and I am a TEDx speaker. I'm an author, so I wrote the Tax Guide for Influencers. I am a business owner, but most importantly for today, I'm an accountant and a revision geek. So I am the founder of Accountancy, which is an absolutely wonderful um, platform and safe place on the internet where I have over 10,000 uh, followers and watchers and allies and community where I create content for people that are training to be an accountant. Uh, I show the behind the scenes of what it's really like running an accountancy practice. And I just give you insight into the real life behind your textbooks. Um, I'm also partner at Strivex Accountants, which is a female led chartered accountancy practice, which I have the honor of running with my life partner and business partner, James. So oh, great, super great to have you. I'm really excited. I have no idea what your journey is going to be like. <laughs> talk us through your qualifications, what qualifications you've got and when you're qualified. Absolutely. So I am Rachel Martin, M-A-A-T, M-B-A and soon to be CMAP. And so I qualified, I did AAT and I finished, I'm looking at the year so I can count backwards. I qualified as AAT in, I think, 2017. I then leveraged my AAT qualification. I was at a real crossroads after AAT uh, to really understand, do I want to be a chartered accountant? What are the benefits? What are the advantages, disadvantages? What are my peers doing? What are the career options? And I'm sure these are all questions that everybody listening has as well. And I always, always thought when I left school that education was a straight line and that, you know, whether or not going to university or taking an apprenticeship would dictate the rest of my life. And actually education is completely fluid. I thought that by not doing a degree as soon as I left university, so I, I did A-levels and then went straight into an apprenticeship. So I started AAT level two as an apprentice and, and trained all the way up to the finance director of a, of a large company. Um, I always thought it was was that straight line and I thought that by not going to university when I was 18 I might be turning down future opportunities and nobody ever told me you can leverage you know you can use AAT you can create a fantastic foundation uh, of education but then you can leverage that in the future to actually get onto a master's program so spoiler alert I, I did an MBA which is a master's in business 
And I did that without any undergraduate degree. So I leveraged my AAT qualification and work experience to get onto that course. I actually only finished that in December 2021. Uh, I got my final exam results today and completed the course. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and then so that my MBA literally finished in December. And then I started studying towards my CMAP, which is the uh, chartered mortgage advice and practice exams in January this year, which I'm hoping to complete in six months. And then I have lots and lots of big plans for further study afterwards. So I am literally a revision geek, but I've not always felt so passionate and excited about studying. I really struggled doing my AAT. And so I'm very excited to be here today to talk about maybe some of the bits that people don't talk about because I really struggled and I very firmly attached my my value as a person to my ability to pass an AAT exam. And so I really hope that if you're listening to this, you have found your safe place because uh, this is a safe place. and it's very easy for people to show the wins on on social media or the people that you're competing against competing against in inverted commons yeah. comment at, um at college but like people don't talk about the failures and I feel as a business owner and as somebody with a with a platform online that has a whole community of young accountants it's my responsibility to talk about the bits that people don't talk about and to talk about the fact that it's difficult and quite often you're giving up a social life and you're giving up time with people that you love but it is worth it it's it's so so more worth it than you can ever ever imagine yeah um but I'm just really excited to sort of lift the lid a little, little bit and, and talk really openly because I didn't have that and I actually think that was part of the reason why I struggled so much was because nobody was sharing their failures and so I thought I was the only person failing yay excited <laughs> but yeah this, we, we we could talk so much about so many of these things like and everybody's revision journey is different and that is what I've um learnt in hindsight maybe at the time maybe 10 years ago and I was like oh no I'm the only one failing because all my colleagues were passing around me um but now everyone's journey is different and that's why the diaries of a revision geek is just my platform I guess to show you guys that it's okay and, and this is not about Sue Smith's or Joe Blog's journey just embrace your one and it can take as long as you need it to and we've got lots of stories um and Oh, goodness, there's so many things we can say, right? About it's okay, it's absolutely all right. But this plaque is worth it. Well, this version of your plaque is absolutely worth it, even more than you probably realize as well. And um, yeah, this is exciting. Let's go back to your AAT journey to start with then. And yeah, do you want to talk us through that and what that looked like for you? Yeah, of course. So I actually started studying AAT before I'd got an apprenticeship. And so I was working in a call center to fund my studies and all of my friends had gone off to university and they were getting drunk and drinking Jager bombs on Tuesday nights. And I was at college on Tuesday nights and it was a bit rubbish. And I again, I think people glamorize, glamorize it and make it feel like it's supposed to be fun all the time. And like, actually, sometimes it's not. It is really hard work. That's why being an accountant is one of the best and most recognized qualifications and, and careers in the world is because actually it's really difficult and it's it's an amazing club to be a part of, but it's a club that requires quite a lot of hard work. And so, um, yeah, I, I think at the time, I, I think in total, I had three or four jobs at, at the same time to just fund being able to do AAT. And then I landed an apprenticeship with my local council. So I did a business administration apprenticeship whilst studying AAT. So I was studying for two qualifications at the same time, but was so desperate to just get experience in finance. Um, that was that was the route I took. So I completed um, a 12 month program of a business administration MVQ whilst also doing AAT level two. And then um, at the same time progressed and got a role in a, in a small, small practice, a small firm, a family run accountancy practice while I did level three. And then I moved to a top 75 to finish my level four. And it was really, I think at the top 75 that I struggled the most because there's quite a toxic culture in big firms when it comes to studying, uh, people were performance managed out of the business if they failed exams. Um, you had to cover the cost of, of the exam yourself if you failed. Like it was very much, if we do well, we celebrate. But if you do badly, it's your responsibility to deal with it. It wasn't, they weren't with you for the good and the bad. And that was very lonely and isolating when actually from an age perspective, I was a young person I'd moved to a city to be on my own, no different to university, but actually didn't have any of the support that my 
peers at university had like I was sort of left to be an adult and navigate that situation on my own whilst actually dealing with gender pay gaps pay gaps because I didn't have a degree and some of my peers did and so I was earning the apprenticeship minimum wage having to take other jobs at the same time as studying whilst trying to prioritize studying and try and have some form of like mental well-being at the same time and yeah there's a lot of a lot of that stuff isn't Instagrammable, you know, it's difficult and you have to navigate and juggle all of those things at the same time whilst whilst trying to compete at work as well. Like competing yeah. at top accountancy practices isn't just based on qualification. These things run side by side like train tracks. It's qualification, experience, the portfolio you have, the clients you work, the network, the networking that you're doing at work at the same time, as well as studying, as well as college, whilst also trying to to live and, and be a human and try and still have a social life at the same time. And I struggled. I struggled so much doing AAT, like not nothing prepared me for that. I, I came from school, um, sixth form, where I was never taught how to study properly. Like schools teach you to pass exams. They don't teach you what personality type you have or what learning style you have. Yeah. They teach you how to pass an exam. And actually the real world and accountancy and accountancy exams are so different to that. I didn't have the skills or the tools or the knowledge or people to help me navigate that for myself and so my my educational career really took a huge like upward trajectory not only in terms of how I felt about it but actually how passionate and excited I was to learn when I undertook my MBA because I took a short break in between AAT and my master's degree and actually during that time I I acknowledged that I actually towards the end of it really didn't enjoy AAT. I, I, I just wanted it to be done. I felt like it was a cloud over me. And yeah, I, I, all the time. Yeah. I couldn't enjoy the time I had off. I felt stressed all the time. But then I resented the fact that if I studied, I didn't have time off. And it, it that's the only way I can describe it is it felt like I had a cloud over me the whole time. And when I finished, I really felt like a burden and a weight had been taken off me. And it actually stopped me celebrating very much. I remember... The whole way through AAT, I had this end point in mind and it was getting, like you say, getting the certificate and framing it and celebrating. And I I actually was just so happy to see the back of it. It made me not want to celebrate at all. And so through that, I wanted to learn from what I experienced. And so I put a lot of research into who am I? Like, how do I learn best? What is my personal my personality type? How can I leverage my personality type to invest in myself more? So I mentioned earlier that I did a, a TEDx talk. My my TED talk was all about how to leverage being an introvert to grow a successful business. And that's because of the work that I did because I struggled with AAT so much. I, I never understood why. And, and actually the reason was I was learning in all of the wrong ways. I was being taught in the ways that don't match who I am and my personality type. And I'm a very anxious person. And so actually for me, the best way to study is to learn something, repeat once, repeat twice, repeat three times, do flashcards, like get to the point where you get to the exam and there are no curveballs because a curveball would cripple me. And I would, I, I literally have sat in exams before and answered two questions and left because I have been so crippled with anxiety and stress. And like, I taught myself out of it before I've even got there. And so I invested so hard in understanding who I am, how I learn and how to study that by the time I got to my MBA, I sat at GMAT with absolutely no problems when through doing AAT, I thought, well, maybe I just can't do exams. I literally yeah. told myself, yeah. you just can't do exams. Um, yeah, invested in myself and, and, and learned and researched about myself and how to overcome that to the point that I was able to sit at GMAT with absolutely no problems with no undergraduate degree, pass the GMAT with flying colors and then get onto an MBA. And, and I, yeah, I, I associate my MBA was such a happy time. It was so passionate. Like even during, like I did it during the pandemic, uh, at home and it reignited my passion for learning and education and, and, and studying because I wasn't learning in the right ways and so um, it's made me really want to speak openly about educating yourself so our business our practice has scaled from 50 clients to 400 in, in 18 months and with that we've grown and scaled the practice there's now we went from being a one-man band and we're now hiring for our eighth and ninth uh, employees and with that becomes you know apprenticeship schemes and I've I've really tried to take a lot of the frustrations the anxiety the worry um 
<laughs> the lack of pay uh, that I experienced myself and actually incorporate that into how I run a business. And so I really tried to reverse engineer the practice to the frustrations that I saw clients experience at a top 75, but also the frustrations I experienced as an employee of a toxic top 75. And so for me, it's all about progressing people and helping them to develop as people while they're with us, not just through qualification, but also finances are a really important part of that. And so finances quite often when you're studying is a, is a carrot that's dangled uh, in front of you. And quite often that's a huge part of the motivation towards studying. I, I remember being promised a pay rise when I, when I finished AAD and, and it, it's never what you feel. You don't get that immediate gratification every time you pass an exam because you're waiting three years to get a pay rise. And so we have a very open and transparent pay matrix. Everybody is paid exactly the same. Everybody has exposure to what everybody else is paid. It's completely a see-through and every single person's pay goes up by 500 pounds every single time they pass an exam. And so we've put the control and the freedom in their hands to progress and succeed and be in control of their own, own wages. And so a huge part of the work that we do within the business is to, we won't rise unless we're lifting other people up. And how can we expect these people to deliver the passion and excitement that we're selling if we, if they are not passionate and excited themselves. And so I feel huge responsibility with that. Um, another thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that when all of my friends went off to university, I was lonely. I was really lonely and I didn't feel like I had a platform to talk about that. Or, you know, all of my friends would come home from uni with these cool hoodies that say like, you know, Cranfield University or like Essex uh, University. And I never had that. And so I've, I've tried to create it myself. That's what accountancy is. Um, we have merch, which is punny, funny accountancy uh, clothes and hoodies and t-shirts that say things like be audit you can be, don't let people spreadsheet about you uh, <laughs> and catch fraud, not feelings. And that's, I feel such a huge responsibility that if what you needed wasn't there when you needed it, you should build it for the people that come after you. And I feel that's what I'm trying to do as an employer, but also as somebody that is has a little piece of the internet you know so you sound so passionate Rachel God, <laughs> there's so much so many things I want to drill down into like your passion overrides um in a, in a beautiful way for sure so thank you for sharing and thank you for just being honest with your anxiety level because mm. I think a lot of us do hide that especially if we are uh, resetters I'm a resetter and uh, I know you are we'll talk about that as well and the anxiety is there with the, and the black cloud is there and and I say with love, guys, the black cloud doesn't actually go until you do finish. Mm. Um, but God, there's loads we can talk about. <laughs> okay, so um, with your anxiety, what was what would you say was um, the way that you managed that successfully? Obviously, there were some struggles as well there, but what was the success, how you managed that yourself? Yeah, I, I, to, be brutally honest, to be brutally honest, during AAT, I didn't manage it at all. It completely managed and controlled me. And actually that meant that I really didn't enjoy studying. I didn't, when I did pass an exam, I wasn't happy and satisfied. I was like, oh God, thank God that's over. Um, so during AAT, to be brutally honest, I didn't manage it at all. Um, however, when the black cloud disappeared, that almost gave me the headspace to evaluate like what happened. Like I'd, I never felt like that at school. Um, why do I feel differently about this than something else? And in reality, I think it was comparison. I am about to marry uh, an absolutely fantastic chartered accountant and we met at work. Um, he is absolutely incredible and it was very much love at first sight. And, oh gosh, he was the second youngest person in the country to qualify as a chartered accountant. And that's who I was comparing myself to. I put so much pressure on myself and I... I like I said before, I, I didn't have the tools and equipment and I, I wasn't educated in the right way to learn how to learn. I wasn't taught how to learn. I wasn't taught how to understand how your brain works and in what environment you work well and how to reward yourself for working. And so the anxiety didn't go away. I actually used the anxiety as motivation to never, ever feel like that ever again. And I'm so glad I did it. And I would really encourage anybody who's listening who has the same because I honestly it's almost indescribable the level of anxiety that you feel like it becomes who you are and 
I honestly got to a point where I couldn't see a way out. I remember thinking like, I cannot do it. I cannot, you know, however many exams I've got left, like it feels impossible. And I would really encourage people if you get to that point, like take a break and use that time to come back better, like build something, like work with people like Helen who could maybe get you to the point where you don't feel that any, anymore. Because I remember feeling like, I would always feel like that. And if ever I tried to do more studying or if ever I, you know, if I wanted to become chartered or do a a master's degree or do further education, I would always feel like that. And I really hope if you take one thing from this is that you won't feel that way forever. And it is possible to, the tools are out there to equip yourself to do this in a way that actually empowers you, doesn't like take control of you. And I, that's how it felt for me was AAT controlled me like, I was on this treadmill and I just couldn't get off. And I remember thinking like, oh God, like, I, why am I even doing this? Um, it is possible to like press pause on the treadmill, actually step off and just start walking at your own pace and in an environment that nurtures you and supports you. And you have people around you that love you and that you can talk to about failing and fear of failure. And there's not enough of content like this to actually just say to people like, I on Instagram, I have nearly 7,000 followers, a huge proportion of which are young people trying to study. And that's a huge responsibility because I have to be very, very, and I, I try so hard to be very honest. And I'm actually recording a YouTube video today, uh, just a little vlog of behind the scenes. We're having an end of season tax party tonight. And so people wanted to come come with us behind the scenes. And I have such a responsibility to show the real life side of things because my journey was in no way perfect or a straight line. It was so squiggly. And so yeah. if you're listening to this and you feel like your line is a squiggly line, that doesn't, the, the journey you take, like doesn't impact the end destination. And when you get there, you won't look back. Like I very, very infrequently think, oh God, remember that AAT exam I failed? <laughs> no, I don't. I yeah. actually, I've got 400 clients who are engaged excited and passionate and so excited to work with us and don't think I've ever been asked by a client how many exams did you fail yeah (laughs) for sure yeah and um that's so true and I the, the anxiety is real the black cloud is real you can press the pause button and I I give a lot of what I call tough love Helen coaching and um I know some I know that there's an argument around being SEMA qualified or not or not having that extra qualification but we do know how important and the opportunities that do come with an AAT, SEMA or ACCA or equivalent qualification there are amazing opportunities which we'll talk about but pausing it might not always be the option either because um I just feel like the black cloud's still there guys and Mm. you might be you might be so much closer than you realize there might just be a few little tweaks you need to make and to boost your confidence to just be able to take a reset in a way with less anxiety with a little bit different preparation and exam technique which is what me and uh, other um, coaches and tutors can absolutely help you with but it's absolutely not impossible like no I'm just like nothing is impossible I say all the time like you can be the president of the United States if you want to be guys like it doesn't matter like I coach and I have many variety of students which I do talk about you know the um, older students in their 40s or 50s I have some dyslexic students I have people who literally just can't pass the, an exam and it's just an exam thing an exam fear and nothing is impossible my yeah. clients my clients are passing like my students get uh, one step closer to this plaque and um I would what I would love to bring to this interview (laughs) god there's just so many things but like it's 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 worth trying but yeah if you want to pause then I wouldn't pause for ages because you might not get back on but yeah there's absolutely options to pause but there's also coaching opportunities and options that people like me and some tutors out there really want to help and support you with your confidence talk about confidence all the time it's really really important especially as a resetter so let's talk about your resetter journey and mm. um, when you failed an exam or how that went. Obviously, we've talked about the anxiety side, but is there any like practical um, resetter uh, challenges that you went through or positives? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my best bit of advice for anybody that's failed an exam is give yourself time to mope about it. It can feel like 
everybody at work or your friends and your family are telling you to dust yourself off, pick yourself back up and move on. And actually, a lot of those people that are trying to help you, and they are trying to help you, don't understand or have no concept of how hard you've tried. And so actually, for a lot of these exams, you're, they're three months in the making, three months of not having a social life, not doing any of that stuff. And if you lose an exam, if you fail an exam, it can feel like all of that is lost. And so my best tip is to, again, we're all accountants. So it's very likely that we are all quite similar in, so I am an ISTJ personality type, which means I'm an introvert. But if you enter ISTJ into a personality test, um, it will tell you that you should become an accountant. So I imagine we're all quite similar on yeah. the spectrum of being introverted and resolving things inwardly, uh, but also being quite specific and quantitative in the way that we make decisions. And so I would really encourage you to set yourself an allowance of time to be sad about it because you have to like if this is a, a bath filling up like you have to release some of that in order to make space for what's to come and to move on from it and I tried so hard to just keep pushing and keep pushing like Dory in Finding Nemo I was just like just keep swimming like don't yeah. don't worry about anybody else just keep going keep going keep going and actually like I wasn't giving myself time to be mad and sad and upset and frustrated and just a bit miserable. And so I would really encourage you to allot yourself an amount of time, whether that's 24 hours, 12 hours or 48 hours. Let yourself feel all of the feelings because very few people actually have an understanding of the the emotional side of studying and how much it takes to even get to doing the exam. And if you fail and you fail by a small amount or a big amount, it's all the same feelings. And so let yourself feel them. That will give you the room and the head space to even work to putting a plan together to move on. So my, my number one top tip, if you are a retaker, is like let yourself grieve for like the time that you lost and for, you know, if, if you fail an exam and you're on a really tight time scale or you've got pressures from work like that's really hard it's yeah, really really balance. hard to deal with yeah yeah the balance is really hard and um I normally say a week max so a lot of a ACCA results come out on a Monday so I say by the end of the next weekend that's it you know that's your buffer of but yeah cry I do say to my, like my um, potential clients and my students because some of my students still fail <laughs> um because it's hard because it's tough right and I still say yeah totally cry absolutely cry this is not yeah. about manning up this is not about like oh my god don't worry about it we'll do next better next time no there is a period of just having some time time is a lovely thing but only a short amount like you said like 48 hours I give everyone a week <laughs> just a tiny bit longer but then we can pick your you have to pick yourself up mm -hmm. in ways and um there's help and support to help you pick yourself up guys if you can't do it on your own it's totally okay and I've always found that like if you take that time to to stop for you know a couple of days a week whatever it is that time gives you the recharge to come back with enough passion and enthusiasm to grab it and do it again and it is a marathon but like there's always stops along the way like you're allowed to stop and like nourish yourself in order to finish the marathon and that's what allowing yourself that time will do for sure well we want you to finish though finish what you started though please because it is worth it um I remember um people would say to me I'm like that non-accounting world oh it's okay like it's okay if you fail don't worry just try again I'm like wow well, it's really annoying though because I'm like oh, my exams were six months at a time so I was yeah. like six months behind even though we're not behind everything does happen for a reason but it's, it's just still a little bit frustrating and then there were some other people who would say oh it's 50 percent pass mate that's quite easy right oh my god how can you not get 50 percent like, oh my god you're not doing these exams you yeah. don't know like it's really tough and um then I would just now encourage you guys to have a circle of and a community of qualifying accountants around you um, that's help and support you and lift you up in a way that you 
understand like I'm a coach on purpose I don't coach everybody um, with their confidence I just coach SEMA and ACCA students because I absolutely know what you're going through guys you know um, and it makes a difference I think it makes a difference and um, that's what I'm on um, in social media and LinkedIn for for sure to shout that message shout to keep to keep keep going <laughs> Okay, so let me ask you the question I'm asking everybody. <laughs> um, because I was gonna think because one of the points of our interview is to inspire and motivate our audiences, which obviously we're definitely doing, which is great. Um, so what I just want to ask you is what opportunities did you think would come from being qualified? Oh, good question. Okay, so I thought at the beginning of A80 that by becoming a qualified accountant, and at that point, I didn't know if I wanted to be chartered or not, uh, that by becoming a qualified accountant, it would give me a solid career. That as a woman, it would give me a career that I could step in and out of, and it would be a qualification that no one would ever be able to take away from me, because as a young woman that would love a family one day, that's important too. So I, I knew it would give me a qualification and uh, a step into a career that I knew was respectable and you don't get asked follow-up questions when you say you're an accountant. An accountant is generally a full stop sort of response. <laughs> what do you do? I'm an accountant, end of conversation. Uh, it, like nobody asks you follow-up questions. And, and I like that, you know, I liked doing a job that everybody knew it was respected and it carries a certain weight with it in terms of like being a respectable, well-paying, uh, great career progression job. So I thought it would give me a qualification. And then secondly, what has come from you? What opportunities and rewards have you had since you've been qualified? Oh gosh, how long have you got? I, oh, I like thinking about that question like actually makes me really, really emotional because I'm so passionate about accountancy. I just feel like this thing full of energy and I have such a responsibility and I feel so passionately about encouraging more young people into the industry and maybe not even young people people who want a career change a pivot like the first person we ever hired was an apprentice in his 30s and so I just want to encourage people into the industry there's a very very strong stereotype in the accounting industry uh, we call it the stale pale male which is the middle-aged white man and uh, accountants are those things too and that's okay but that doesn't have to be who you are and it's okay if you don't feel that way or you don't resonate with that or relate to that and I wanted to build something that young passionate excited people that want a qualification that not only gives you incredible skills to do a job but it also gives you incredible skills for the rest of your life I as a business owner absolutely outperform a lot of other business owners because I am an accountant not the other way around and doing an AAT qualification doing an accountancy qualification opened so many more doors than I ever, ever, ever thought it would. And some of those doors have looked closed and I've had to like really rattle the handle to get them open, but they're all there. And I, my sole purpose on this planet is to encourage more young people, more young women into this industry that isn't that is literally sort of marked as a boring job that uh, only boring people do. I honestly have the best job in the world. I get to work with professional, passionate, excited people who are literally changing the world. I get to work with influencers that I followed on the internet for a very long time and I, I fangirl on Zoom in front of them and it's embarrassing. <laughs> I get to talk to people who are excited and, and bursting with the same energy that I am. And actually within that, within the practice that I run, not only do I get to do those things externally, I get to do it internally too. And I have a team that are literal superheroes and change the lives of our clients. But at the same time, I'm able to work with them and mentor them and guide them and teach them that it's okay to fail as long as you've learned something from it. And I could talk about the opportunities that doing an accountancy qualification have given me literally all day, but I have this huge passion to change the entire world, not just the world of accountancy. And uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, then you should definitely, definitely come along for the journey because I would love to see you there. 
yeah it definitely there's so much more journey after this as well guys yeah like obviously I'm a business owner too so there's just hundreds of opportunities that I've had I just remember when you said that one of my things is um I was a finance manager of an SME many SMEs but one in particular I was in the on the book in having board meetings I was leading board meetings from the finance pl- um, position every month and I was the only female under 40 in that boardroom and that is because I have my similar letters after my name. I was only 34 at the time. So um, those kind of awards um, in that female space, like I want more female SM, female finance leads in the SME place, 100%, so, so many more. And to get the letters, to get any of these plaques will help you jump, jump to get there for sure. So thank you. Thank you. We just have to do another interview on just the opportunities <laughs> we've had afterwards. <laughs> okay, final question. I love this question. I give a lot of revision tips. So I just wondered if you could share your number one tip for any qualifying accountants listening. Oh, how can I think of just one thing? Um, I have a morning routine that changed my life. That I'd love to share with you if that's okay it's not a specific revision tip but if if you're in the habit of really wanting to mix things up and make sure you're prioritizing well-being uh, and studying at the same time I would definitely recommend that you do this and so my morning routine consists of six different things so it is affirmations visualizations meditation exercise reading and journaling uh, every single morning so I go into monk mode I, I call it monk mode in inverted commas that's not a it's, I'm not actually a monk. Um, I go into monk mode where I do two hours of like hardcore, deep focus work for two hours in the morning, which as a business owner, if you can get if you can get part of your day where no one's bothering you, like lap it up. And so I spend two hours doing that. And then I spend the next hour doing visualizations, affirmations, exercise, and really just like prioritizing myself and looking after myself. And I visualize the whole way through the MBA, uh, short term and long term goals. And so my long term goal was I would literally sit and it sounds so silly, but it's not like it it fundamentally changed my life. I would every morning sit, close my eyes and imagine myself graduating. And again, as a young person, I'm sure many of the people listening to this actually took a career in accountancy rather than going to university. Graduating was a huge rite of passage that I'd never been given the opportunity to do. And so graduating was hugely important to me. And so every day for the two years that I was doing an MBA, I visualized graduating. And that gave me the motivation every day, even on the days I didn't want to, to study and to just do like one, a hundred times one still makes a hundred. Like you don't have to do a hundred every day, but if you do one a hundred times, you can still get to the same result. And actually for me, visualizing that and like starting every single day with like, this is my goal. This is what I'm working towards. I want this. This is why I want this. And this is what's going to come next was hugely important. And so the morning routine for me that incorporates exercise and looking after yourself and reading, not a textbook. You're not allowed to pick up an ACCA or see the textbook. <laughs> it's reading things that fulfill you, things that motivate you, uh, books like start with why or how to fail, like books that really drive you. Uh, journaling getting those feelings out and saying I'm trying to understand why I failed that exam and like really getting feelings out on paper that um, as introverts that's very important to do visualizations to visualize those goals and and I I, again like I I used to think that visualizations and and affirmations were like a bit hippy dippy and I didn't really want to do it and they've been fundamental to every day every single day no matter how long your marathon is reminding me of the finish line um and then also affirmations you know speaking kindly to yourself saying that you will pass an exam and that you're not anxious and actually if you tell yourself every day that you're not anxious like fake it till you make it like keep saying it and one day it will come true and yeah for me that morning routine changed my whole life um sobriety as well is is a huge part of who I am and why I love studying and working so hard and the consistency and high level of self-awareness that I've been able to to bring to the business Uh, actually comes from sobriety to me too which is probably a whole different podcast episode but um (laughs) yeah sobriety played a huge part in my change of opinion towards studying well thank you I mean I know it's easy to for us to all assume or judge things but like obviously picking up from your revision geek journey I just feel like this the self-awareness that you have now is really adding value to your education and your daily happiness 
and if anybody can have any self-awareness on like and I would obviously bring it back to your SEMA and ACCA journey just to be like what works for you how do you want to learn what doesn't work for you and then don't do it it's okay like be self-aware even if you don't have two hours in the morning you might have two minutes you can do one of those things in two minutes that Mm -hmm. will help you be self-aware to embrace and empower your revision journey for sure Absolutely. Yeah. If anyone's listening to that and they want to know more about how to do that in two minutes or two hours, um, there's a book called Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. And that uh, is the book that taught me all about uh, having a miracle morning. Thank you so much for having your interview, Rachel. It was so good to be in my revision corner for a little bit of today. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me again. I'll say it again. Thank you so much for having me and Helen in your ears, wherever you are. We're really, really grateful and uh, it's a huge privilege to have this this time in your day. So we're really, really grateful. Thank you.